after studying this module you shall be able to understand the meaning and characteristics of debt instruments describe various types of debt instruments identify the types of return associated with debt securities analyze various types of risk associated with debt investment to begin with the meaning of debt securities debt market is the part of financial market in which debt instruments of varying features are issued and traded among the investors debt instruments are considered safer in comparison to equity and provide regular income to the investors in india wholesale debt market is quite vibrant and volume of trading is very high however trading volumes are very low in retail debt segment and there is a need of reforms to make the market more vibrant and liquid for retail investors in india the issuer of the fixed income instruments includes central and state government banks and financial institutions and corporates debt instruments may be issued with various features to attract the different categories of investors these debt instruments may carry fixed coupon stated as 12% per annum or floating coupon quoted as 5 year g sec plus 1% here 5 year g sec rates is the base rate and it will fluctuate as and when coupon on the government securities will change the 1% is the spread which will be decided based on the strength of the issuer and the market interest rate at the time of issue the debt instruments may have long term or short term maturity and the coupon may be paid on quarterly semi annually or annual basis these bonds may be issued and redeemed at discount par or premium depending on the terms of issue further bonds may be callable puttable or convertible as stated at the time of issue debt instruments represent borrowing on the part of the issuer of such instrument the issuer of debt may be government or corporates debt instruments is issued by government or public sector entity are known as bonds while the debt instruments issued by the private sector companies are called as debentures in this module we will use bonds and debentures interchangeably the debt is issued for a specific period of time which is known as its tenure the subscriber of debt instruments lends the funds to the borrowing entity the investor receives the periodic return in the form of interest and at the end of the tenure he receives the maturity proceeds or the principal amount the issuer of the debt instrument issues the bond or debentures to the subscriber of these securities against the funds received from them these instruments represent the borrowing on the part of issuer from the investor of these fixed income securities they are safe investment for the investors as the principal and interest payment is mandatory irrespective of the profits or losses of the issuer the cash flows from these instruments are quite predictable as the investor receives a periodic interest normally payable on quarterly or semi annual basis and principal at maturity these fixed income instruments are secured borrowing by the issuer entity the company's fixed and movable assets are kept as collateral for these fixed income securities and they have first charge on these assets in case of non payment of interest or principal by the issuer these securities will be serviced by selling of the fixed and movable assets which are kept as collateral thus they are considered as quite safe investment coming on to the characteristics of debt instruments let us understand the various features of debt instruments or securities 
bonds carry a phase or par value which is the nominal value of bond used for accounting purpose normally it is rupees 100 or rupees 1000 in india the debt securities have a fixed maturity and they have issued for a specific time period which is called the tenure of the debt maturity date is the date at which bonds will mature and the principal will be redeemed by the issuer entity from this date onwards bond will cease to exist if all payment has been made term to maturity is a relative tenure and depends when we are calculating it on a given date term to maturity implies the number of months or years remaining for the bond to mature the term to maturity changes every day from date of issue of the bond until its maturity the term to maturity of a bond can be calculated on any date as the period of the time between such a date and the date of maturity it is also called the term or the tenure of the bond bonds are generally secured by some collateral against it normally the fixed assets of the issuer are kept as security this safeguards the interest of the investors in the event of default in the payment of interest and principal by the issuer company these fixed assets can be sold out and proceeds can be used to recover the dues of the investors as the debt represents borrowing for the issuer of debt instruments therefore the investor receives periodic return in the form of interest and at the end of the tenure he receives the maturity proceeds or principal amount generally the debt securities carry a fixed coupon rate which is applied to a face value and resulting interest amount is paid to the investors the interest may be paid quarterly or semi annually or annually generally when the firms raise the funds through debts they have to agree to various restrictive conditions known as convenances this may include the restrictions imposed on the borrower or may require approval of investors for further borrowing or expansion of business next we will talk about the issue and redemption price when the companies issue the bonds or debentures they have various options regarding their issue price and the redemption value these options are used to enhance the marketability of the debt instruments debt instruments may be issued at par discount or premium similarly it may be redeemed at par premium or discount depending on the financial strength or reputation of the issuer for raising the funds there may be various combinations like issued at par and redeemed at par or issued at par and redeemed at premium etc now we will discuss about the types of debt instruments there are various types of debt securities traded in the market these securities can be classified on several bases like on the basis of issuing entity they can be classified as government and corporate debt securities on the basis of type of coupon applicable these securities can be classified as fixed coupon zero coupon and floating coupon bonds or debentures they are also classified as convertible non convertible and partially convertible debentures depending upon the option to convert them into equity on maturity thus we have numerous variants of debt which are discussed follows government and corporate debt securities in india when the debt securities are issued by the government or public sector undertaking they are called bonds while the debt instruments issued by the private sector companies are called debentures this is the only difference of terminology both have similar features therefore bonds and debentures are used interchangeably companies require funds for variety of purposes for example 
buying land, plant and machinery, expansion, modernization, etc. In order to raise funds, they borrow from the general public by issuing bonds and debentures. The investor of these debt securities lends the money to the issuer entity for the specified tenure of bond or debenture and in return receives the period interest income at specified coupon rate. This coupon may be a fixed coupon rate or floating coupon rate payable quarterly, semi-annually or annually. At the maturity, the borrower company redeems these bonds or debentures and the investor receives back his principal amount. Next, we will discuss the fixed coupon, floating coupon and zero coupon bonds. Bonds can be issued with fixed or floating coupon rate. Coupon rate is the rate which is quoted on the instrument and calculated on the face value of bond. It is the nominal rate of interest payable periodically to the holder of the bond or debenture. For example, fixed rate can be expressed at 11% per annum payable semi-annually. In this case, bond will pay interest at the rate of 11% per annum to the investor till maturity irrespective of the movements in the market interest rates. Floating rate is linked to a base rate and for example can be expressed as 10 year GSEC plus 2% where 10 year GSEC is base rate and will change whenever there is change in 10 year government bond market interest rate. Additional 2% is known as the spread and depends on the goodwill of the issuer company and market interest rate movement at the time of issue. Higher the goodwill of the issuer, lower the spread and vice versa. In this case, coupon rate will continue to move in alignment with the changes in the rate on government securities. In case of zero coupon bonds, no interest is paid during the tenure. They are issued at a discount and redeemed at par. The difference between the issue price and the redemption value denotes the amount of interest to investor. Now coming on to the fully convertible debentures, FCDs, partially convertible debentures, PCDs and non-convertible debentures, NCDs. Convertible debentures are the ones that can be converted into equity shares at a later date either fully or partly. This can be done as per the terms specified at the time of issue of debt. This option is available with the bond holder. Investor will be benefited by getting the stocks at pre-specified price while the stock actually would have reached the higher value in the market. Non-convertible bonds are redeemed at maturity. Next, we will talk about secured and unsecured debentures. Secured bonds are backed by some collateral, normally the fixed assets of the issuer company. Long-term bonds are normally the secured bonds. Short-term bonds with a maturity of less than 18 months are normally issued without any collateral against them and are called unsecured bonds. Now we will talk about the next category which is redeemable and irredeemable debenture. In most cases debentures and bonds are repaid at their nominal value at the time of maturity. They are called redeemable debt instruments. There are certain debt securities which do not have a set maturity date. Such securities are called irredeemable or perpetual securities. Thus, if the bonds are issued with a fixed tenure, they are called redeemable debentures while the perpetual debentures are called irredeemable debentures. Based on the tenure of bond or maturity period, bonds are classified as long term, medium term and short term bonds. Next, we will talk about the bond returns in which firstly we will be talking about the bond yield. Yield is an important concept to be considered 
while investing in the bond because it measures the return of one bond against another. It enables the investor to take informed decisions about which bond to buy. In a sense, yield is the rate of return on bond investment. However, it is not fixed like a bond's quoted coupon rate. Bond yield varies depending upon the changes in the market interest rate and resultant volatility in the existing bond prices. The following example illustrates how yield works. You buy a bond, say, at rupees 100 a bond and hold it for a year in a scenario of rising interest rates and then sell it. You will receive a lower price for the bond than you paid for it because in the market interest rates have gone up while your bond carries a fixed coupon rate which is less than the prevailing interest rates. Therefore, your bond has lost its value and you will be able to sell it only if you accept a lower price, say rupees 95 a bond. Although the buyer will receive the same amount of interest as you did and will also have the same amount of principal returned at maturity, the buyer yields or rate of return will be higher than yours because the buyer has paid lower price for the bond. Yield is commonly measured in two ways, current yield and yield to maturity. Current yield. The current yield is calculated by dividing the annual coupon amount by the prevailing bond price. If you buy a bond at par, the current yield equals its stated interest rate. Thus, the current yield on a par value bond paying 6% is 6%. However, if the market price of the bond is more than par value, then the current yield will be less than the quoted coupon rate and vice versa. For example, if you buy rupees 1000 bond with a coupon rate of 6% at rupees 850, your current yield would be 7.05% that is rupees 1000 into 0 0.06 divided by rupees 850. The next way to measure the yield is yield to maturity. The yield to maturity or redemption yield is a more useful measure of the return of the bond. It is calculated by using current cash outflows to buy the bond and all the future cash flows related to the bond. This include current market price and the amount and timing of all remaining coupon payments and the repayment amount due on maturity. It indicates the total return an investor will receive if he holds a bond until its maturity. It also enables the investors to compare the bonds with different maturities and coupons. Yield to maturity includes all the interest payments plus any capital gain the investor will realize if the investor purchases the bond below par. Alternatively, it will take into account any capital loss investor will suffer if purchase price of the bond is above par. For example, a coupon bond which pay interest of 4% annually has a par value of rupees 1000, matures in 5 years and is selling today at rupees 785. The actual yield to maturity on this bond is calculated as rupees 785 is equals to rupees 40 bracket 1 minus bracket 1 plus r bracket close to the power minus 5 divided by r bracket close plus 1000 divided by 1 plus r to the power 5 Thus, R is equals to 9.62%. Next, we will talk about the risk in debt investment. Generally, the debt investment is considered safer instrument because the coupon rate and the principal repayment are assured by the issuer. It does not mean that debt is a risk-free investment. An investor in a debt security has also to bear certain types of risk like default risk, interest rate risk, reinvestment risk, etc. 
Firstly, we will talk about the default risk. Default risk, also known as credit risk, is the risk of non-payment of interest and principal by the issuer of the debt instrument. Probability of the non-payment or delayed payment of interest and principal by the issuer of bond is known as default risk. The default risk may be caused by the poor financial performance or fraudulent intentions of the bond issuer. However, sovereign papers, that is, government securities, are risk-free. Default or credit risk is measured by a process known as credit rating. Debt instruments are mandatorily rated by the SEBI registered rating agencies. In India, various credit rating agencies are Chrysal, ICRA, CARE, etc. They give the ratings to the debt instruments which vary from AAA to D where AAA is highest rating and implies highest safety and least risk of default while D implies default. High rating of a debt instrument implies low risk of default and high safety. So, a debt instrument with an AAA rating will offer a better safety and lesser default risk compared to a debt instrument with AA, A or lower rating. Credit rating is a reflection of the company's past history of debt payment and its present financial situation. However, rating is not an indication of probable returns of an instrument it is capable of providing in the future and it does not give a guarantee against future default. Secondly, we will discuss about interest rate risk. Interest rate risk refers to a change in the price of an existing bond due to the change in the prevailing interest rate. When the interest rate in general rises, then the existing bonds which are paying low coupon loses their value and their price comes down and vice versa. Such bond price volatility caused by the movements in interest rates is termed as interest rate risk. Thus, bond prices follow an inverse relationship with the interest rates. Corporate bonds tend to rise in value when interest rates fall because their coupon rate is higher in comparison to the declined market interest rates. Similarly, existing bonds will lose their value when interest rates rise because they are offering lower coupon rates in comparison to new increased rates offered in the market by newly issued instruments. Bonds with longer maturity have higher interest rate sensitivity and they depict higher price volatility for a given change in interest rates. An investor who plans to hold the bond till maturity is less worried for such price volatility because he will receive the redemption amount at maturity and any price fluctuations during the tenure does not affect his cash flows. However, any investor planning to sell the bonds during the tenure of bond is affected by these bond price movements caused by the market interest rate movements. The inverse association between bonds prices and market interest rates, that is, the fact that bonds lose their value while interest rate rise and vice versa, can be explained as follows. When market interest rate goes up, then new bond issues have to offer the investors higher coupon rate than the older securities. Thus, existing bonds which have relatively lower coupon becomes less attractive. Hence, prices of these existing bonds go down. When general interest rate in the market decline, then new bond issues which are floated in the market offers lower yields than the older securities. Thus, existing bonds which are offering higher coupons becomes more attractive to investors and their value goes up. 
hence they are sold at higher prices above their par value as a result if one sells a bond before maturity it may be worth more or less than it was paid for let us understand this with the help of an example suppose an investor has invested in a debt security with a coupon rate of 8% subsequently the coupon rate in the market for similar securities rises to 9% the security with 8% coupon rate no longer remains an attractive investment it will therefore lose its value and will be quoted at a lower price conversely if the yields in the market go down the debt security will gain value thus there is an opposite relationship between yields and value of such debt securities which offer a fixed rate of interest the last type of risk we will be discussing is reinvestment risk reinvestment risk is a challenge that all investors face when bond yields are falling it is the risk that future cash flows either coupons or the final return of principal will need to be reinvested in lower yielding securities reinvestment risk can be defined as the likelihood of a fall in the interest rate resulting in a lack of alternatives to invest the periodic interest and principal amount received at maturity at higher rates or at a rate equivalent to coupon rate assume that an investor has invested rupees 1 lakh in a bond which gives him 11% per year coupon rate year after year the bond is a 5 year bond periodically the investor received that 11% interest income and he receives the principal amount at the end of 5 years at what rate does he reinvest these cash proceeds the rate would be a function of what are the rates on the other bonds or what is the market offering at that point in time which may have fallen to 7% during this period this means that for all the interest income that the investor receives periodically and principal amount at maturity the reinvestment rate is uncertain the bond portfolio of rupees 1 lakh which was generating the return of rupees 11000 annually may have to be reinvested at a rate of 7% leading to only rupees 7000 annual return this is reinvestment risk to summarize in all debt instruments represent borrowing for the issuer of the debt debt has certain specific features like fixed maturity fixed coupon rate redemption at maturity there are various types of debt instruments like fixed and floating coupon bonds long term and short term bonds non convertible or convertible debentures long term and short term bonds redeemable and irredeemable debentures bond returns includes periodic coupon payment current yield yield to maturity bond investment include various types of risk like interest rate risk default risk and reinvestment risk